Hey guys, thanks so much for joining. My name is Michelle and I am a former client advisor for Louis Vuitton. Today I want to talk about a subject that may be a little controversial, maybe a little taboo, and it is the subject of replicas. So in my research for my channel, I keep coming across this article about a group, not just a group, like a culture, a subculture of wealthy ladies in New York. And there is a subreddit on it. I won't say the name, but you can find the article linked below. I thought this was interesting because this group of wealthy and not just wealthy, but ultra wealthy, like CEOs, investors, venture capitalists, like women who can afford authentic handbags are choosing to buy fakes or shall I say replicas? What's a nice word for fake? A replica. So there's a whole subculture, a whole subreddit about these ladies who pride themselves on replicas. Is this shocking? So I know there are plenty of re replicas out there, but I'm a little shocked because, so I'm not in that ultra wealthy category, not even close. I'm trying to put my mind in their head, but it's a little shocking to me because honestly, when I worked for Louis, there were some rich people who would just come in and like, Here's 30 grand, here's 11 grand, even 10 grand. I'm like, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to spend. And I always think about down payment to the car, the whole car, the whole car on your wrist as a handbag. So if they can do it, more power to them. But I, I always thought, you know, if I had that money, like how much money would I have to have to drop it, drop that much at Louis? And then there are people who trip over themselves because they cannot get this push-up Matisse. I really want this bag. I can't believe you don't have it. And it's it's like life or death. I must have this bag or I'm gonna start crying. You listen all, it's not that serious. So anyways, in comparison to this group of women who already have the social status and just choose to carry replicas, so the article anonymously interviews these ladies. And part of it, they say, is the thrill of the chase. It's a game of seeing how well put together these replica bags are. And it's the idea of saving money that you're not spending 10 grand on a bag. It's much more reasonable. Um, because these ladies, they get bored with the bags and then they want to switch them out. But one of the things that they said was it's the stress factor. Do you want to go through the hassle of going to the store? Maybe not being able to get a bag. What if they run out? What if my purchase history isn't good enough to buy this Birkin? And you literally don't need this type of stress in your life. Yes, don't we stress over these? Disclaimer here, you guys. I am not promoting buying a replica, nor am I promoting going to the store and spending all your money. Do whatever the heck you want. None of my business. So another reason for this subculture is that it's actually really fun to wheel and deal and feel like you're getting a deal. If you've ever went shopping in another country outside of the US or a flea market where you do have to bargain and wheel and deal, it gets kind of addicted. It gets kind of fun. It activates some dopamine in your brain and they're like, yeah, let's go for the next one, even if you don't need it. Now, these ladies pride themselves on finding the best fake possible down to the stitch count, down to the materials, and even the way the bag smells. Trust me, some of these reps are so good you wouldn't even know. I always worried about that in the store. Is somebody going to bring in a replica and try to return it? I don't think it ever happened, but it was always a worry in the back of my head. So please note, this is not just handbags, it's shoes, clothing, watches, jewelry, everything can be replicated. Another statement from the ladies in the article is that you do not grow your wealth buying expensive handbags. I wholeheartedly agree with this. Even though there are some bags you can resell on the market and maybe even make some money, you're most likely looking at breaking even after fees and stuff but the thing is you're just never guaranteed so maybe it's a better idea to spend your money like reinvest in your business go on vacation invest in your kids education i never look as a luxury purchase as an investment unless it's actually making money while it's sitting on your shelf but anyways to each their own so another point i want to make 
We all know that luxury retail prices have increased dramatically, not just like $20, $40, but like hundreds to thousands of dollars. I mean, if you just do a little search on the internet, if I can just tell you what the prices were in Louis Vuitton in 2019 to what they are now, some items have increased by a thousand dollars. The pochette accessoire, it was $545 and now it's over a thousand in just a few years. So you know what those luxury retail do, like what those luxury retailers are doing? They are screwing the consumer. This is why I started my channel, you guys. Um, everybody was thinking, oh, the quality is going to go up because the price is going to go up. The salesperson is going to get paid more. And none of that is true, if anything, because they're making more product for the demand. Aren't we seeing the qualities of these bags almost decline or just not what we expect for the money that we are going to pay? And if you've seen my previous videos where I've reported to you, commissions for the sales associates, at least for Vuitton, are being cut. They were cut during the pandemic. And guess what? Bernard Arnault, the richest man in the world who owns LVMH, made a killing during the pandemic. So there's no reason he needs to raise the prices for you guys. No reason. Why don't you want to kind of stick it to the man like, I am not going to buy your product, but I'm going to buy a fake. So anyhow, um, one question you might be asking, repercussions. Is there any repercussions for holding, buying, or selling a fake? Uh, the answer is not really. You can easily claim that you did not know your bag was not authentic. And it's very difficult from these other countries to find the perpetrators deep in the middle of China somewhere. So it is hard to persecute. If no one here knows you're holding a fake bag and there are no repercussions, I mean... Now I'm going to address some of the different theories about where these bags come from and why there are so many um, replicas out there. Now, these are things that I'm asked in the comments section and I'm gonna give you a one, two, three and listen to it because these are things people will tell you to try to get you to buy a replica bag. Like if you're shopping on Canal Street and someone is saying, no, no, this is real, this is real. I'm gonna tell you the reasons they're going to tell you it's real and why to not believe them. So the first excuse is these are factory extras. Now, there is no room for factory extras. I used to work in fashion manufacturing and you buy the amount of material that you need to cut for the great exact amount of bags or clothes or shoes that you need to make. So there is never a factory extra. They will try to get you with that, with anything, clothes, shoes, bags, whatever. The other theory is that the fashion house is actually in on it and they own the replica factory. So they are making money both ways. Okay, y'all, it takes a lot to just like, you know, pop up and make a factory. So if you're already making money from the authentic bag, like really, Ain't nobody got time for that. So that's that theory is out of the question too. Now, the third thing that has been told is that unused materials are sold on the secondary market so they can take these authentic coach materials, authentic Louis materials, and just make a bag. So it's like, you know, it's not a Louis, but it's the materials of. So these are the types of things that uh, counterfeiters will tell you to try to buy something, you know, like if you're on Canal Street or in the alleys of LA. So do not be fooled because none of that is true. How these counterfeits are so good because what these, um, what these falsy makers do is they go out and they buy the actual bag ASAP as soon as possible and they rip it apart and copy the pattern, copy the stitches exactly. So please do not be shocked because everybody does this everywhere I'm from Shane to Fashion Nova to big brands. Everyone does this. Look at brands like Rebecca Minkoff and Kurt Geiger. You must believe they're buying all the competitors' bags from top to bottom because some of their bags are inspired um, by Chanel and Dior. Okay, so some of you with ethical questions like, oh my God, I can't believe it. It's so bad for the brand. I'm losing sleep because uh, Louis Vuitton is losing money. Um, no, they're not. <laughs> I just mentioned Bernard Arnault. He's like the third richest man in the world. Behind Jeff Bezos is like second richest man, owner of Amazon. So uh, he is not losing any sleep. In fact, like I said, he is just getting 
richer and richer. Um, you know, I've already stated in a previous video, the salespeople at Vuitton get less than 1% commission. It's like 0.1 commission that they get on these monogram bags. So um, it's all going to the guy upstairs. But look, I went to the mall and every time I go to the mall, there is a line out the door for Vuitton and now Chanel and now Hermes. So ain't nobody hurting. Now the monogram print is the most copied print in the world. So having said that, you know, think about if you went and bought an authentic bag for 2000, but if you also bought a fake for 200, Louis Vuitton is still getting this free advertisement of carrying around their logo, whether it's real or fake. It makes people want to buy it, but it also dilutes the brand exclusivity because now more people than they expected to have it have the bag. Not only that, but not all replicas are made equal. So I've seen some janky replicas, okay? So I can only imagine if someone took my logo and stuck it on, took, put it on a bag and it was just like not to my standards, I'd be like, uh, that is not mine. So I get it, but overall they're still getting free advertising. In fact, do you know, this is a story from Gucci that they did not mind replicas at all. They did not own the replica factories, but they did not also, they also did not put a stop to replicas because they knew like if people are copying us, it's just going to make people want Gucci even more. So, you know, let me just ask you, do you want to go through the journey of, of buying a million things before you get offered your Birkin? Or do you just want to go to like a third party seller and just like cut the nonsense? Here's the money. I want my Birkin or as do oh i said it or as these ladies do here's the money just give me something that looks like a birkin and no one will ever know <laughs> last thing i suppose an ethical question now all that being said i'm just really really curious from you guys i get approached by these replica companies all the time all the time and they want me to unbox a bag now i've always been on the fence i don't know how people will react to that because i don't promote i don't promote i talk about a brand but i don't promote so let me ask you guys how do you feel about it if i acquire one of these bags just so i can show it to you compare it with the real deal can you see the difference i mean if you already watch my channel you know i tell you like you this dirty corporation but you still want to shop there so okay buy this bag and i'm just i'm just neutral on the subject and i'm super super curious about what these replicas look like. So just let me know in the comments your thoughts, your ideas, your suggestions. And would be would you be mad at me if I just went ahead and accepted a fake because I'm so freaking curious about what these bags look like. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Michelle and make it a great day. I will see you soon. Bye.